Hi everybody, this is Just Martin 91 and I mean, this will be my review slash, I don't even know if it's going to be spoiler talk because it's been a while since the movie was out, like a good couple days, and it's just been a while since I did a review generally, and this one I've been holding off on for a little while, I've been busy and it's been crazy and sickness and everything, that's why I've been off for a while. Anyways, going into this, um... I, this was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. All right, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, the thirty-second MCU film, and the ra the reviews were raving about it. The fans are basically calling it one of the best trilogies out there for James Gunn and the Guardians. I don't know if I completely agree on that. Uh, while all the entries are enjoyable, I just don't think they're all on the same metric. But that being said, I do very much appreciate what he did here and I have conflicting thoughts and I guess we're here to discuss that in many ways. I found that this is one of the most enjoyable movies from Marvel of recent and I think this has been a very common mindset to have. Uh, definitely delivered on the story and character aspect and uh, this is very much a um, rocket tribute. And one could argue that all of Guardians really was in the backlog of things because James Gunn has been talking about this for quite some time, how, how Rocket was his most favorite character and how he treasured him so much and, and wanted to take good care of him. And, and I think when he got fired in 2018, I think one of his biggest concerns obviously was how is Volume 3 going to be handled? If it was handed down to another director, and how would this character, uh, you know, be handled? So once he got rehired, and I'm convinced he only came back to finish this thing off, originally, even before he signed the DC contract. That just solidified things that he no longer wants to stay with Marvel because after what Disney did, I mean, they burned a bridge, and they were lucky to get him back, and he got them one of the highest grossing uh, entries of recent. Uh, it's it's still climbing, of course, but it's going to be one of the best received and best earned movies in their recent lineup. Uh, definitely, when it comes to the receiving and um, widespread acclaim ratio, like it's extremely well balanced, as all things at Marvel should be. But uh, it's just not how it's been because of everything that's been going on. And actually holding off on this thought process, I've been seeing so many things coming out recently with James Gunn basically saying that, yeah, he um, prevented uh, Disney from getting his getting their grubby hands on it and trying to, uh, you know, basically do what they do with conflicting, uh, conflicting areas where basically they go in, they tear apart the product, then nothing's good enough for them. And then they basically make it very much, well, anti-enjoyable, you know? Because you can feel when there's too many cooks in the kitchen. And that's kind of where everything goes to crap. And this movie really felt like it was organic. It was very much its own thing. Albeit not without flaws, all right? I felt like Volume 2 ended a certain way. So promised us Adam Warlock. And we got him in this one. And I feel like... And my biggest concern is not even how he was portrayed. I liked Will Poulter, how he did it. It made sense in its in in, in the aspect that yeah, he was a uh, newly conceived character more or less. But there were so many questions within my mind, and we're going to be entering spoiler territory here, I think, because I do have questions and I'm going to ask them because honestly, it doesn't make any sense to me. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two was create was obviously filmed and written before Infinity War and Endgame came out, all right? So, at the end of the movie, at the the end credit scene, uh, you know, Aisha sends out, well, welcomes Adam, or basically his birthing pod, kind of. We don't know how long it took him to, you know, actually emerge, but and how long time actually got spent between now and then. 
Because let's not factor out the fact that Infinity War and Endgame happened by this point. So five years have passed. And I know that James Gunn said that the greater MCU has no real effect on this. That Phase 4's multiverse and Kang doesn't really factor into this. Which I can respect. But when you're actually going to put a storyline in there with Gamora being affected by Endgame. So we're actually acknowledging that, you know, Gamora died. And we are now dealing with the consequences of that. Which I might add, fans wouldn't even know about her surviving the dusting after Endgame. If they didn't see the deleted scene where basically we see Gamora just shift off of everybody else's mourning. Uh, you know, Iron Man's, uh, Tony Stark's demise. And that's the only reference we get to Gamora is actually still with us. Well, the one that came back from 2014. So there are so many aspects here that I found were kind of loose threads that I was, well, I was, here's the beauty of it, okay? When I came out, I was analyzing it. But it's nothing that was distracting me when I was watching the film. The film in and of itself it's a very enjoyable experience that I found made me laugh, made me cry, got me invested, and it was extremely uh, compelling. And that's the thing. I just found that Rocket, while well, he was given one of the best storylines of all, I just felt like most of the other characters within it, I don't feel like most of them were that well fleshed out. Um... When it comes to Drax, Drax made a full circle moment, and I loved that. In the beginning of the movie, it feels like he's kind of just phoning things in, but maybe that's how things were written for him. I know he wasn't a fan of how Drax was handled throughout the franchise in the great scheme of things. While he did trust James Gunn, he just felt like the, uh, Disney, Disney, I think, had a larger hand in this. They kind of watered his character down, Infinity, especially what happened in Infinity War and Endgame. They kind of just went on the sidelines. I mean... Drax didn't even get a punch on Thanos, let alone taking him down for what he did to his wife and daughter. I mean, there's just so many elements that were not, you know, fulfilled. And they really wrapped that up here in a way that I really respected about who Drax is and why he approaches things the way he does and flipped it and basically said, here's how... We could utilize this another way and i respected that so much it it kind of felt earned in a way that i don't think anyone saw coming you know um everybody was um assuming that we'll think things will happen in this movie and i mean i was among them highly among them it just made sense for so many reasons i'll be, be because of the movie's premise because of what the trailers were showing and because of the fact that james Gunn is leaving the franchise we don't know who or how this is going to um, advance from here on out um, and who's going to take the reins and how it's going to feel. But I feel like there could be potential here. I just don't think there's going to be a volume four. And James got attested to that because this team is broken up at this point in time. And I don't know if they're ever going to have a reunion of sorts or how that could happen or, you know, but uh, some of the actors made it pretty clear that they want to take some time off from these characters and for all intents and purposes in the movie they properly retired them and that's all I'm gonna say I feel like this film is a great love letter to what James Gunn started I definitely think the first one is still the best entry all right in just a lot of ways the third one is very like, honestly, like, I think that the first one is top-tier MCU. I also think this third one is top-tier MCU. I do. We didn't even get into the villain. I mean, that's the biggest issue with Marvel of ever. All right? Chakwudi Iwuji did an amazing job with the High Evolutionary's character. I The energy he brought to it. And it's, it's just, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps, but you can't really see anything with this coat on. But I was so filled with rage and hatred towards this character. It made no sense to me at one point. I'm like, how are we getting tapped into these emotions with a character, even a storyline that we barely 
had a chance to resonate with the core element of it, obviously, was always Rocket. Because we learned to love this guy. We cared about him. So anything that links to him and the suffering that he had to go through, I mean, it was a no-brainer at that point. You have to basically give a crap. And I did, and we all did. And that's why this movie is... That's why this trilogy is effective, and that's why this movie is going to go down in Marvel history as one of the best entries of all time, no matter what comes after this. James Gunn actually made a bold enough statement, and I think he's right on this one, but hey, we don't know, that the High Evolutionary will forever be one of the worst MCU villains, and nothing will top him. Because no matter how, you know high and mighty some villains are or have whatever world they the world takeover plan they have that's not exactly what this guy was doing this guy tried to create civilization and basically exterminate at the same time now one could argue ego did the same thing but it's not really like ego kind of grew his own um grew his own creations basically all right he developed these things. Like what, what, what the high evolutionary did here is he took living beings and experimented on them in ways that was completely inhumane, irredeemable. And I'm not saying what, what Ego did was redeemable by any means. It's just there was a fine line where Ego was more cartoonish and you couldn't really take him seriously. High evolutionary, there is there, there was something resonate, resonated here. And I think we could all feel that. At the end of the day, though, I did appreciate this movie. A solid... What would I give this? Eight and a half, nine out of ten. I had some gripes, as I mentioned before. More or less with the... I feel like... But this is nothing to do with James Gunn. In the sense that he had this under control. It's Disney's firing how everything happened i just felt like too much time has passed and somehow some things didn't resonate the way that they should have it felt like it obviously felt like it could have came out sooner it had nothing to do with phase four it had almost everything to do with phase three this could have opened phase four and i would have been happy with it it would have been so much better if this opened phase four for fuck's sake sorry it would have been so much better if this opened phase four as opposed to black widow because imagine now the low turnout is happening, if at all, because people have been brought down by all the convoluted entries that we've been getting recently that have been getting mixed reactions. Anyways, for now, this is it. I'll be putting up more reviews soon. I love this franchise. I love this movie. And I'm so happy I was able to attend the marathon premiere basically on uh, last wednesday i saw it twice now by the way and i'm gonna be seeing it more times because honestly like i'm a marvel fan obviously and i just love this stuff so until next time have a good one guys and for now just enjoy the movies be it mario guardians whatever you go see and i mean like the summer's rolling out fast 10 is coming up mermaids coming up we are getting a lot of things transformers spider-verse flash Let's just, let's just enjoy this, all right? This is going to be a summer to remember for the movies, and I think this will be insane. I'm actually wondering who's going to be the top contender at the box office line at this point, you know? For right now, Super Mario is reigning supreme. So, best animated movie of all time when it comes to grossing. And, uh, yeah. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy the movies.